In this part, we are going to set up our Coda sheet. So log into Coda and open a new document. And let's call this uh, deal approvals. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to sync this um, with our Gmail. So um, click this plus button, hit sync, and then select Gmail on the right. And we are going to select messages and drag it over. This is where you're going to connect your Gmail account. And we'll go ahead and call this deal approvals as well. And now we need to set up um, what messages we are pulling in. So um, ideally for this, you would have some kind of filter or you would have stuff going to an email address that's specific to what you will be approving or rejecting. So um, I am just using my Gmail account and I made some test emails that all have the same subject start, which is um, deal review. And so now it will pull in every email that has a subject that starts with deal review or has deal review in the subject line um, for the last seven days. I don't really need the to field, obviously. We'll leave the date. And I want to grab the text from the email. So I'm just going to click on um, this email here and scroll down and select add column uh, along the text line here. Next, we are going to add a um, Slack integration. So under packs, select Slack, and you need to connect your Slack environment to Coda. So go ahead and sign in and install. So now that that's good to go, I'm gonna go back in here and add a button. And I'm going to format this column and I want the label to be um, get approvals. The action is going to be Slack post message. I'm gonna to connect to my account. The content is going to be equals um, the text column, hit enter. The channel, um, this is where your uh, um, approval alert is gonna go. So I'm just gonna have this go to general and make sure you have the um, hashtag symbol and I'm going to select a color and I'm going to rename this, get approvals as well. And then I'm going to do a checkbox that just says sent for approval. And this is just so I can keep track of what I've sent and what has not sent. So now we're going to create one more table and it's gonna be a new table. And we'll go ahead and move that here. And we'll call this approvals, rejections. This first column is going to be called Slack message URL. Second column will be uh, called text. Then we're going to have a column for approved and a column for um, rejection. Okay, so now um, in the next part, we are going to hop into Zapier and I'll see you there. Okay, in this part, we are going to set up our Zapier so we can create a new row in our Coda table based off someone's reaction to an approval Slack request. So log into Zapier and let's go ahead and make a Zap. We are going to choose Slack. The trigger event will be um, new reaction added, click continue, connect your Slack account. You're going to choose which reaction you want to look for. Um, you don't have a ton of options. Um, I'm just going to pick simple smile. The channel I'm going to be watching will be my general channel and then click continue. Test and continue. 
And now let's connect to Coda. The action event will be create row and click continue. Connect your Coda account. The document is going to be our deal approvals document. The table is going to be our approvals rejections table. And we want the Slack message URL column to link to the message permalink. And then we are going to link the text column to the message raw text. Um, and then click for approved. We are going to populate the reaction and click continue. Test and continue. And now let's turn on our zap. We're going to name this one um, approvals. Yes. And then we are going to create one more. So we can just copy this, click into it. And this time we are going to be looking for a rejection reaction. Again, you don't have a lot of options. So I'm just going to go with glitch crab. Click continue done editing. And then we want to update the coda part um, by uh, deleting the reaction from the approved column and adding the reaction to the rejected column and click continue. And then you can turn this app on as well. So in the next part, I will show you how this all works.